a girl chat edition and I am so excited to have so many amazing gals with me so I'm going to give a few moments for them to introduce themselves. Hi everybody it's Mac here I just want to say Renee thank you so much for inviting me and you know just including me in this conversation I, I can't wait to just hear what we're going to uh, discuss and talk about I, it's going to be a blast. Absolutely. And I'm Vanessa. I'm so excited to be here as well. And um, I truly love Girl Talk. And so this is exciting for me. And so I can't wait to see what we're going to talk about today. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley. Thanks for having me, Renee. I'm excited to see what we're going to talk about, too. Well, thanks for joining me again. And I just want to throw something out there because it's an area that we're all dealing with and living in, and that is the social media aspects that, at least for me when I was younger, I really didn't have to deal with. And so I just wanted to see what your perspective is. I know for me, the challenge is not falling into the comparison trap of what I see others doing or this expectation of, uh, what somebody else has accomplished or is doing and not really translating that onto my own life and feeling like I'm not doing as much. So any thoughts on that? Definitely. Um, for me personally, uh, I kind of grew up at least my teenage years having, you know, that prevalent uh, social media in my life. And so uh, it's a little bit different for me, just, I, it's always been there. That kind of comparison has always been there. And so it's over the years, just learning to be as authentic as I can be, you know, in my everyday day, uh, life. And then also on social media, because it, social media to me is just sharing my life with the people that I know and love, you know, the things that I do. So it's, it's less about, oh, I, I did this this weekend. You know, I want to show it off to the world. It's more of, hey, these are some memories that I experienced. I, I want to share with you um, and just let you in on some things that maybe you could enjoy as well. So um, for me, it's just keeping myself accountable to when um, I get into that moment where like, oh, you know, like, why doesn't my life look like that? And just, you know, doing a quick heart check and just being like, it, it doesn't need to be, you know, you are you and, and that's okay. And just, you know, making sure that you present that in social media and being like, it's okay that my Instagram account doesn't look like everybody else's, you know, and just being content with that. Yeah, that's so good, actually, keeping it in its proper perspective and mm -hmm. the lane that it should be, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's a, a helpful, wise, wise input. Thank you for sharing that. Why? Right. And I, I think for me, I think when, when it comes to social media, I think for such a long time, um, I kind of had like these feelings like back and forth. Like I, and I admit, I did fall into the comparison game, like looking at somebody on social media and I'm like, oh, I wish like, you know, my life looked like hers or I drive, or if I want to drive the same car she does or have the same shoes or whatever that may be. <laughs> but um, I did fall into that um, for some time, but I think it, it was, it wasn't until, um, and I don't want to say older because I don't want to age myself, but, um, <laughs> but <laughs> I think that, I think as I got more mature, I would say, I think that um, I started to go through things outside of social media. Well, I always went through things, but I think there were certain things that I went through outside of certain so uh, social media um, that kind of helped me see and say, you know what, like this person is showing one portion of their life to you. Like they're not showing the struggles. They're not showing, you know, the, the pains and all those things that you go through as well. They're only showing one form of themselves on social media. And so I feel like once I was able to understand that, that um, 
that one picture that may be put up is not that person all day. Um, this wasn't me all day. Um, and so, you know, just to be real, like, and so it's like, I had a hair, head full of hair and, you know, no makeup on. And so it's like, it's just really being comfortable um, with yourself and, and really just, and, and that does take time. I'm not saying that that's something that comes easy, um, especially with this technology driven world that we're currently living in. And we see new things every day to where it's like we can potentially play that comparison game. And from time to time, I still do. I look at stuff and I'm like, oh, that would be nice. But again, I have to go back to number one, who God says I am. Um, I think that's the most important thing is um, who does God say I am and knowing that my path is my path and that um, my path can't look like everybody else's. We're all made different and unique and um, we have to um, embrace that. And so now if I see somebody on social media, I'm like, oh, she's amazing. Like she is living her, her life out in her unique self and I'm going to live my life out in my unique self. And so, uh, but again, it takes time for that to, to come about. And sometimes some of us just have it, you know, but again, I didn't have it all the time. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it's, it's definitely just, um, it's definitely something that you have to um, walk through with God when it comes to that comparison there. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I think as someone who's uh, more mature also, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's something that you definitely have to grow into. It's not something that happens overnight and it definitely takes work. You have to have those constant reminders and check-ins with God and having him tell you who you are instead of looking somewhere else for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. So true. Yes, because what's being reflected back to us is only the highlights. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. the truth, the accomplishment, all the smiles. No. <laughs> Not like the crying kids right before the photo was shot <laughs> and all the stress and the tones that were <laughs> exchanged between the people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, right. it's all those kinds of things. And um, even recently, I was just scrolling through social media and I felt the Lord drop this in my heart. And it was, it was this man. <laughs> if... I like what you posted, that should be enough. Mm -hmm. If I asked you to share it and nobody else does, you're good. My comment over it is I love you and you're accepted and I believe in you. Right. So it really takes the pressure off. And I just, this is like in the last 24 hours, the Lord just, kind of dropped that and said, hey, stop looking for the, the like, share, comments of other people. Mm -hmm. I like you. I comment about you all the time. <laughs> and what I share with you, you can share with other people. Yeah. And that's the, the proper pers progression and perspective to have in regards to social media, where there's a pool to even just be on there so much. And it can be a distraction. Yeah. And then it can lead us down that path yeah. of, what am I doing as in comparison to everybody else? So, mm -hmm. and, and I think it also just goes back to, and you mentioned this, Vanessa is, and you as well, Ashley, just being mindful of where our sense of true self and pure self comes from and walking that out mm -hmm. in a genuine way, because, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I have an inner critic mm -hmm. that sometimes tries to really be at the forefront. And so I have to draw back and really say, you know, Lord, is this who you made me to be? And I call that just the ongoing discovery journey of, of being a strong and confident woman. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't know if anybody has some thoughts on that. But I sure would like to hear them if you do. Mm -hmm. 
Don't everybody talk at once. I can continue as well. No, yeah, I, I do have some thoughts on that. I'm sorry. My, Let it sink in. A little weird. Um, but yeah, I do have some thoughts on that, actually. Um, you know, when it comes to be in when it comes to being a confident, you know, woman, as you were talking about, you know, God saying, hey, I comment on you all the time. And I, you know, I think, um, again, going back to just this social media driven era to where it's like we, in a way, we are trying to, not to say we're wanting to be validated by it, but I think um, we do want some, some sort of, you know, recognition as far as saying, oh, okay, you know, she's, she posted this picture or, you know, is it cute? Is it not cute or whatever it may be. And we think that getting likes or comments or anything like that is a measure of, you know, who we are mm -hmm. and they're not. It's like, you know what? Maybe the album rhythm was off that day, or maybe, you know, but it doesn't matter because if you like it and if God likes it, it doesn't matter um, who else, you know, likes it or comments or whatever it may be. Um, because again, it's about being comfortable and confident within yourself. Um, that really counts um, at this point. And so um, I think it's, it's just important again to know, um, going back to who we are in Christ, um, and that's a daily thing that we have to continue um, to do. We have to continue to ask God, God, who am I? Who do you say I am? Because um, who I'm thinking I am right now is not <laughs> is not even close to what you know you think I am. So I think it's important again to always bring it back to that. Um, and if you don't know um, who He says you are. Um, that's why we have to get into those places of um, devotion in our quiet times and um, all of that plays a part in when it comes out to how we see and view ourselves and how we interact with others as well. And so, yeah, so that, that's how I feel about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think, I think um, is, is, go ahead, Ashley. No, I was just going to say, I think it's important to, to, um, be mindful of who your inner circle is because I mean obviously we want God's opinion to be the one that matters but he can also use the people in your life to tell you those things that you need to hear when you're not always hearing from him he can use other people so um, just making sure that we have other godly women in our lives who are going to pour into us in in that way and remind us of who we are when we're not strong enough to remember ourselves so no, uh, yeah, that's a that's a really good point. Just having that support system intact, you know, just making sure that that's you know founded in Christ. That's super important, and that's something that I went through, you know, just as a young woman, as a teenager, just making sure that my friends group, that my tight knit community, you know, was founded in Christ, and that they all had, a, you know, a real. Um, relationship with God and that that was um you know healthy and that growing up um you know in today's day and age that I found um that a lot of young people it's it's very surface level you know you know I, I go to church because my parents go to church you know I go to youth group because you know they play fun games and we get to do, you know, we get to go to events for free. And so it's making sure that the people you surround yourself with, it, it affects you on a really, really deep level. And so mm -hmm. that, which is why I love the fact that um, RLC's college group is just so, it's so real. It's the real life college group. It's, we um we all have that really deep personal relationship with Christ and we can all talk about that with one another on a really deep level it's not just the surface level of oh yeah I love Jesus Jesus loves me you know which is good don't get me wrong but it's you know getting deep into you know how am I doing and what does my relationship with Christ look like and being able to openly talk about that with one another. And I think that's just so, so important. Mm -hmm. 
I think you guys bring up a good aspect of the discovery journey um, mm -hmm. for ourselves and how God uses other people in that. Um, and that's why we, we don't need to compare ourselves with one another because oftentimes it sets us up not to foster and nurture those very relationships that we need because mm -hmm. we think that possibly in some way, shape or form, we wouldn't have anything in common or just what we've seen on a surface level. Uh, we're just not open to the fullness of what that person can bring. And I, I think we need one another because God does affirm and really draw out aspects of ourself through the eyes of other people, through what they see and the strengths that they're calling out and they're celebrating. And that builds a component of confidence within us that God uses to strengthen that disposition of who he created us to be. And uh, I think that's one of the wonderful ways that God uses one another. So uh, Mac mentioned how she has found that uh, Ashley, I would be interested in your journey, uh, how God's brought people like that into your life. Yeah, I think, um, I think most of it has just come through fellowship in church. I mean, I was, I was blessed enough to go to a, a Christian school. So, um, a few of my core friends I did meet there and foster a relationship there. Um, but most of it has been through church. And I think that's why it's so important that we stay connected and, and find those core friends and core support groups in people who have the same values and, and foundations that we do. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, having shared values, a commonality, a Christ as that cornerstone really of our lives is what mm -hmm. helps us live out that genuine uh, purity that he's called us to in a, a in a contaminated world. <laughs> there's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of contamination. And so um, let's maybe just uh, share a few thoughts on that. Of course, we know that having people in our friendship or support circle is important. But uh, what kind of boundaries do you set just to to live a lifestyle of, of purity so that you are true to who God has really called you to be? That's a heavy question. <laughs> um, I think, I mean, for me personally, I just have to take into consideration, like, what is my goal? What am I working towards? Who do I want to be? And then from there, you, you kind of set up where you want to go. Like, do I want to engage in the craziness? Do I want more stress in my life? Or do I want to have that peace? And do I want that unconditional love that only God has to offer. So where am I getting those things from? Do I want immediate happiness and instant gratification or do I want eternal joy? Like mm -hmm. once you figure out what you want and it, it just follows from there. Like, well, how do I get that? And then mm -hmm. it's, it's a process though. <laughs> it is. It's, it's discovery, you know, what works mm -hmm. for me, what doesn't work for me. What do I need right now? What, um, what do I need to remove from my life? What do I need to mm -hmm. add right now? Yeah, so right. That I, can, I can be fulfilled uh, as I'm still maybe progressing and waiting for some areas mm -hmm. that, um, that I desire mm -hmm. from the Lord. Um, and that's what I mean, like being pure hearted in that pursuit. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's good because I think... I think for me, when we're, we're talking about purity and we're talking about just being pure within yourself and on this whole journey, um, Ashley mentioned a great point, who is in your life? Like for me, that is huge um, because I depend so much on community um, to keep me accountable along with God as well. But, um, yeah. community is so important because it's like, I remember times to where it was like, I, 
I was going through some things and I'm and I was going off in my own head and if I wasn't able to call someone and say hey this is what's really going on with me and this is how I'm feeling right now um, pertaining to this and I'll say it pertaining to singleness or pertaining to whatever um, is going on you have those moments to where yeah you do get to a place in your mature time to where you're like you know what I'm content with what God is doing in my life and I, you know certain things not everything but I'm content with what's going on but then you do have those moments and you're like wow it'd be real nice to just be able to just hang out with you know and so you have those moments but I think um again it's important to not keep it um bottled up inside and keep it within your own mind because what happens is that's kind of like a playground <laughs> to where the enemy can potentially come in and he can start mm -hmm. to mess with your head a little bit and he can start to whisper things and say um well the reason why you're still single is because nobody wants you well that's not true and we know that you know and so yeah. then you got to come back at him with the word right and yeah. so um <laughs> you know so we know that but um, it's just, yeah, it's a, a season and we have to know that, um, each season that we're in is, 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 is God ordained. And so if the season right now, um, is for you to work on your career or for you to move somewhere or for you to be in a relationship, for you to be married, whatever that uh, season is, um, I feel like for me, I've had to really work with God on trusting him in that in each and every season and know that each season is not there to harm me but it's there to teach me something um about myself and about what he wants for me to do for my purpose and so i think as as i've again i've gotten older i begin to realize that and not just older but just a lot of different experiences and then being with God, that's helped me um, to recognize that. But it, again, it doesn't take away from that feeling of like, okay, well, what's up, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's like, that's gonna be there because, you know, God said, like, if you have a desire for something, if you have a desire to be married or whatever that may be, then he'll bless you with that. But he don't tell you the timing. He doesn't tell you what, you know, where, where that's at nope. on, <laughs> on the, on the scale there, <laughs> you know? So you're thinking to yourself like, okay, well, I'm going to be married by this time and I'm going to have kids by this. So me and my friend can do this. And that may just not be the, the, the path for your life. I mean, I'm a planner and I plan some stuff out. I mean, let me tell y'all, I, I, I had my whole life planned out. When I was 21, I had it all planned out. I did. Like, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. Okay, and I'm going to get married by 25. Okay, and then I'm going to have this amount of kids. I'm going to do all this. And after a while, God was like, so is, is that what you're writing right now? Because, <laughs> you know, I have different things going on. And again, it, it took me time to cope with that. But um, I've, I've, I've grown to see that um, I wasn't ready to be that person. Some people are, and that's their, their, their path, and that's their purpose, and that's what God has had for them. I can only speak for me. I was not ready for all that at 21 years old. Some people are. And so it's just mm -hmm. all a matter of what God has in the season for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And just kind of, you know, submitting to what God has for you and trusting that. And I feel like... Um, that's definitely something that, you know, even at 19, I deal with just being like, well, I'm not where I want to be. And it's just, you know, submitting to God and being like, okay, this is in your hands. I'm having faith. I'm trusting because, you know, I may not always be where I think I am, you know, and, and God, you know, God sees everything. God um, sees uh, who you are. You know, he created you. He knows who you are in the moment. Um, and so it just, you know, kind of just being like, okay, you know, you, you see me where I'm at, even if I don't see, see me where I'm at. And so just being like, okay, have faith and just sacrificing and submitting to. Mm -hmm. That's so good. That's so good. 
I call it that tension. Mm -hmm. There's always a little tension that we live with mm -hmm. because we feel this pull towards the hopeful future that God has. Every day of our life has been written before even one of them came to be. So he knows what's coming. Of course, we've all agreed. He does not disclose that to us. <laughs> and even once you, you know, because I'll just say it, I have almost about 20 years on you all. So look fabulous. <laughs> but it's the truth. And so <laughs> even at this stage of life, I'm still trusting, mm -hmm. not maybe in the same way or waiting for the same things that, that you all are mm -hmm. at your stage of life, mm -hmm. but that never goes away. Mm -hmm. So once you fulfill this dream and this purpose and this vision, once you get married and then you have kids and then, then, and then the trusting just compounds. And so that's why I say, there's a constant discovery. And if I could look back and say, what would I, what would I tell my 20 year old self? I would, I would say, what would God tell me if I would have had ears to hear? <laughs> uh, but what would I tell myself? What can I tell, tell you guys is enjoy every, every phase and every stage of what God is growing and developing. You never get it back. Yeah. You don't ever get it back. And that's the tension of what, what is coming that I have my gaze and my eye upon and what opportunities do I have in this moment right now? What is set before me? Because all of it is to, to be part of, of a fulfillment and a contentment that we can have because of that trust and that confidence that God is going to bring it about. And uh, so with that, just want to thank everybody for joining me for Real Life with Renee. And I look forward to connecting with everyone again really soon. Thank you so much for having us. Yay. For having us, guys. Great job, everyone. <laughs>